Symbionts, a species of inorganic, amorphous, extraterrestrial beings created out of a living abyss by the God King in Black, Null, to act as his army. The residents of Clintar are an incredibly diverse, powerful, and monstrous species who live and survive through the individuals they call their hosts. I'm Ben Ball. And I'm Adam Andrews. And today on Top 10 Nerd, we are going to go over the top 10 symbiotes we want in the MCU. At number 10, we have Toxin. One of the only good symbiotes, Toxin is an offspring of Carnage and the 1000th symbiote of his lineage. He's one of the most powerful symbiotes by a long shot and is actually considered to be more powerful than Venom and Carnage combined. I think Toxin would be a perfect addition to the MCU because as it stands, Marvel movies haven't quite delved into the complexity of the story behind the symbiotes. And so far with the Venom series being what it is, it doesn't seem like Venom and his counterparts are being portrayed in the way that they deserve. I mean, they haven't even explored their origins with Null and the Hive, and that each and every symbiote has its own MO. Toxin is a powerful, good-natured symbiote that seems to have a mind of his own and would do a lot to help the one-note portrayal of symbiotes taking place right now in the MCU. Anti-Venom. Is this cheating? I don't think so. The anti-venom was more like a symbiote suit that didn't have its own consciousness and could be completely controlled by its host. Eddie Brock gained the ability to use slash control this symbiote after he had separated from the venom symbiote, which left traces of itself in his body. Martin Lee, otherwise known as Mr. Negative, used his powers to cure the cancer that Eddie had at the time, with the side effect of fusing the remnants of venom with the negative powers and Eddie's white blood cells. But in the comics, this led to the new anti-venom symbiote emerging that had a lot of the same symbiote powers that Eddie had with Venom, plus unique healing powers like producing antibodies that can cure any known disease and removing any other impurities within a human body, which apparently includes other symbiotes because it allowed Eddie Brock to completely reject Venom when he tried to rebond. I doubt we'd ever see this symbiote in the MCU, but it would definitely be cool. Scream. This symbiote is such a cool looking character with a great backstory. She's created when the Life Foundation decides they need to prepare their wealthy clients in the event of mutually assured destruction. Yes, this character comes about during the Cold War era when the world thought a nuclear holocaust was imminent. So what the Life Foundation decides to do is capture Venom and extract five seeds from the symbiote to be hatched into offspring. It appears that the plan is to control whatever symbiotes hatch and try and harness their power to build a superhuman police force for their dystopian future that they plan to make after the Cold War. But can you guess what happens? Yeah, the symbiote is too young to control, so it latches onto Donna Diego, a mercenary suffering from schizophrenia, and becomes Scream. I think Scream just looks so cool, and this backstory based on this fear of nuclear fallout is again in the zeitgeist, making it a perfect opportunity for the MCU to bring her back. Scream is also one of the few symbiotes that takes a female presenting form, at least in the current state, which would be interesting to explore. Number seven, Payback. I'd like to see Payback come onto the Marvel Cinematic Universe simply because she is something different. Payback is Mavis Trent, an agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. who bonded with a symbiote that isn't exactly a member of the same race the other symbiotes like Venom and Carnage are. Her symbiote is more like an offshoot or cousin of the Clintar race. Payback is an energy based symbiote rather than an organically based one, which as you can imagine makes her rather unique with some cool different symbiote powers to boot. While having all the usual superhuman enhancements, Payback can also fly and produce electromagnetic manipulation in the form of microwaves and electromagnetic pulses. The symbiote itself had previously bonded to her father and had imprinted with his personality and memories, which transferred to Mavis when they bonded, which I think would make for some good emotion if she was in the MCU. The symbiote also feeds off its host's bliss without hurting them, which sounds quite lovely actually. At number six, we have Sleeper. Sleeper is the seventh spawn of the Venom symbiote, and it comes to be in a very chaotic environment at Alchemax's Astrobiology Laboratory. Sleeper is almost captured by the symbiote task force, and they were planning to force it to be bonded to the Scorpion, which naturally would have been a chaotic and devastating decision. But what's interesting is that Venom takes something of a parental stance against this decision, concerned for their offspring that Sleeper would become corrupt if bonded at such a young age. But what's most interesting about the sleeper symbiote is that it spends a lot of its time traveling through the cosmos. This could give the MCU an opportunity to include one of the symbiotes in a storyline that takes place beyond Earth, like perhaps in a crossover with the Guardians of the Galaxy or Thor. Number 5. 
Zizix. A mutant of the Clintar race, Zizix was classified as one of the five most dangerous criminals the Shi'ar Empire had ever captured. Instead of making a symbiotic bond with its hosts, it would instead take complete control over whoever its host was. And instead of feeding off of adrenaline and chemicals produced in the body, it would instead just feed off of the host itself, consuming their brains. Other than that unique facet of its being, it possessed all the same abilities of other members of its race. Like I said before, Zix was captured by the Shi'ar Empire, but after some time it was used by the Shi'ar as a weapon, and that's where it truly showed that it was one of the most fearsome and terrifying symbiotes that was ever stalking the starways. Might be a bit brutal for the MCU, but they could probably find a way. The Grendel, one of the oldest symbiotes out there, the Grendel was created literally billions of years ago by Null. It takes the form of a dragon and traverses the cosmos alongside a crimson symbiote dragon named Big Mother, created using Null's blood. This symbiote makes its way into the storyline of many different eras of Earth's history, including the Viking Age, the Vietnam War, and into the modern era. The Grendel would be a great addition to the MCU because it would allow them to explore the ancient history of Venom and the other symbiotes like it. I can envision even just a few scenes or a section of a movie taking place in a historical setting with an enormous symbiotic dragon making a devastating entrance and Null being at the helm of it all. Then cutting forward again to the modern age where the heroes we know and love face off against the creature themselves. This would add a world of context to some of the most popular storylines we've come to enjoy and depending on how our modern heroes contend with the Grendel, also how their powers might hold up to the test of Time. Number 3 Bedlam Null was not the only King in Black to exist in the Marvel Universe. After Eddie Brock has become the new King in Black, leaving Dylan Brock in possession of the Venom symbiote, Dylan comes into contact with a giant red and black future King in Black by the name of Bedlam in Venom number 7. By come into contact, I mean Bedlam completely just wrecks him. After Bedlam has Dylan pinned, he reveals his identity as Eddie Brock himself. Now this is probably not actually Eddie. The Kings in Black all have access to the symbiote hive mind, which means they have access to the codexes of the other Kings in Black. So. Bedlam could just be using the codex of Eddie Brock to mess with Dylan. The reason it's probably not Eddie is because Eddie has traveled through space and ended up in the Garden of Time in the far future, where he too is attacked by Bedlam, with none of the other Kings in Black intervening, who bites his arm off and tries to eat him. He's one tough cookie, and I'd like to see him, or honestly any of the Kings in Black, show up in the MCU, maybe thanks to God the Gore Butcher. Null Sword All Black the very first symbiote Null ever created, All Black, is a sword made out of Living Abyss, which is basically an eldritch substance originating from the primordial void. Or in other words, it's the gooey, sticky looking stuff that makes up a symbiote. The sword has been used to kill gods during what was known as the Deicidal Rampage, and actually formed its own awful afterlife inhabited by the souls slain by the sword itself. The sword eventually makes its way to Gore, an alien with a certain hatred for gods, who ends up becoming known as Gord the God Butcher. And he couldn't do it without All Black by his side. This symbiotic sword, powerful enough to decapitate a celestial. With Gore the God Butcher being the main antagonist in the upcoming Thor movie, Thor Love and Thunder, we should expect to see All Black make an appearance. It's crazy to think that Venom, the most widely popular of the symbiotes, is the 998th symbiote and will be able to see the legacy of the very first symbiote ever created. Let's hope they do this movie justice. Number 1 Venom. Who else did you think would be at the number one spot? Yes, he and Eddie Brock were technically in an end credit scene with a tiny piece of himself being left in the cinematic universe. Since we have recently had him appear in the Sony Venom movies outside of the MCU, what I am personally hoping is that we get to see that piece of Venom merge with Eugene Flash Thompson, who is indeed in the MCU, and in the comics, after suffering the loss of his legs as a soldier, becomes the fan favorite Agent Venom who is an extremely awesome character. Barring that though, I think it would be incredibly cool if they really went full comic book and gave us the damn Venomsaurus Rex from the old man Logan. That probably won't happen, but please, just for me, please do it, please. So that's our list. How did you feel about our selections here? Leave it all down in the comments below and let us know what you think. Thanks for watching Top 10 Nerd. Make sure to leave a like and follow us on Instagram if you'd like. Until next time, stay nerdy.